The source of our child's lighting this morning is the Harvard Square Library article on water ritual, a ceremony born some 45 years ago from Unitarian Universalist Women's Search to create a form of worship that reflects and honors our own life cycles and spirituality. Celebrating women's experiences, they chose water in its many facets to symbolize empowerment and rivers to express our capacity to connect and grow. Like rivers, we make our way from places distant and near and come together to shape a new spirituality, drawing on our strengths and experiences to create rituals and symbols that give meaning to us. We like our chalice to honor the inspired women who led the way and to illumine our paths as we continue the search they began. Hi, I'm Carol Lewis, the Director of Administration for First Parish in Cambridge. I'm going to share a little bit now about the origins of the Water Communion Service in Unitarian Universalism. For many Unitarian Universalist congregations, Water Communion is an annual ritual used during in-gathering or homecoming Sunday services to invite people into the new church year. The origins of the Water Communion ritual, though, are actually rooted in the feminist movement in Unitarian Universalism and the development of our current principles and purposes, which were adopted in 1985. In November 1980, two Unitarian Universalist women, Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview, created a worship service for the women and religion continental convocation of Unitarian Universalists entitled Coming Home Like Rivers to the Sea. As they shaped that service, McDade and Longview wanted to create a ritual that spoke to the connectedness to one another, to the totality of life, and to our place on this planet. By acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be the place from which all life on our planet came, it is the womb of life, and that amniotic waters surround each of us prenatally, they included a new inclusive symbol of women's spirituality, water. They wrote, the water ceremony became the central part of a religious service that broke with tradition in significant ways. It was created by lay women, women who had long been silent in the pews. The ritual space was also made sacred by the women themselves. They gathered to worship in a way authentic and liberating to us, not as a church, but in a semicircle around a large common earthen bowl. It was a ritual of women being connected by a universal symbol, water, a ritual of women being connected to the totality of life. At that first ritual, they asked eight different women, each coming from distant places, to bring water, and they did. Water from the Rio Grande and Assinibion rivers, rainwater from Maryland, water from the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, and others were poured into the earthenware bowl as each bearer described its significance. Unlike many contemporary celebrations, however, the original ritual noted that it was important for those participating to have the opportunity to take some of the commingled waters home. Indeed, they invited the women present to empty out any bottle of cosmetics or perfume that they might have brought with them and to use it to convey some of the water home, thus abandoning a product that exploited perceived feminine inadequacies to make room for that which might remind them of their shared power. But most of all, person, persons accustomed to the current practice of water celebrations might be surprised by the depth of sharing that took place as the waters were mingled. Here's an example of what one participant shared as she poured her water into the common bowl. Assiniboine River in Winnipeg, Canada, Jean Bramadette. 
I bring water from Canada, from the north, from the prairies. This water comes from the Assiniboine River, which ultimately flows into Hudson Bay. The water from this river is very important to me because I live on this river. It is almost an extension of my living room and constantly observe the changes. Sometimes it flows fast and sometimes slowly, quite a bit like my own moods and my own life. I have listened at night to the boom and crack of the ice flows breaking as winter turns into spring. I have watched helplessly as a man drowned in the fast moving waters before me. I have observed with pleasure the blue herons receiving sustenance from its banks. I have enjoyed the river in all of its seasons, skating in the winter, canoeing in the summer, but most of all, the river is a symbol of the lasting power of life. The physical part of me may die, but like the river, my spirit will live on. If I stand out in the rain, will it wash away my tears? Will a whole heart still remain when my anguish disappears? And if I let it truly drench me, Will the waters then recede? And if I let my jaw unclench, will my anger be set free? Or will the rain just fall on me? Will the rain just fall on me? If I shout into the wind, will my cries be blown away? Will a new life then begin, and will my heart line be remained? And if I let the zephyrs move me, will my pathway be swept clean? And if I find a voice to soothe me, will there be a better dream? Or will the wind just blow at me? Will the wind just blow at me? Well, there's hope in every sunrise. There's promise in a rainbow. There's freedom in a sunset made of gold. And I imagine there are deeper dreams, deeper dreams ahead. And more than I have ever said, more than I have ever said, more than I have ever said. If I walk through fields of snow, will the snow drifts cover me? Will it quiet me as I go, or will this hurt forever be? And if I make it through the storm, will a spring thaw touch my bones? Will I finally feel warm, this heart that longs for home? Or will the snow just cover me? Will the snow just cover me? Well, there's hope in every sunrise, there's promise in a rainbow, there's freedom in a sunset made of gold. And I imagine there are deeper dreams, deeper dreams ahead, and more
more than I have ever said, more than I have ever said, more than I have ever said. So if I stand out in the rain, Wash away my tears Will a whole heart still remain When my anguish disappears And if I let it truly drench me Will the waters then recede And if I let my jaw unclench Will my anger be set free I've always imagined my leadership style as like water and my philosophy of teaching as about creating containers and vessels. I envision my personal style as like river water flowing around the rocks, around the obstacles, wearing them smooth, persistent, finding a quiet and subtle way. Water is clear and sometimes close to invisible, but it is also the universal solvent, working to smooth everything, gentle but enduring in its flow toward its goal. I didn't realize how countercultural and alone that style felt until recently I heard a song by Beautiful Chorus called The Waves We Give. If you watch the Wonder Woman movie as a woman and you felt a sense of vindication, a sense of things finally falling into place where you could see yourself as the hero. If you watch Black Panther as a black person and rejoiced, you may have felt similarly. I heard these lyrics and I felt something in me had been recognized and mirrored back to me for the first time. Beautiful chorus sings, Be like water, my friend. You shall find a way around or through it. When nothing within us stays rigid, we decide the shape we're in. Educating especially about faith and spirituality, for me is about shaping and holding a space for people to share and learn. Building the shape, the sturdiness, the height of the container walls with covenant and structure. This cauldron of held space in a workshop or a class or a camp allows for safety. It allows for people to open their minds and hearts and be fluid enough to let the words of other people enter in and change them. It allows learners to learn. And we must close the container with care, ending the experience and moving people on and out, taking change with them into the wider world. Religious educators love a good metaphor. And you may have heard me tell a story about the power of water to create change. How one motivational drop jumps into a bucket. And over time, many drops of water join together to create an unstoppable tide for change. 
In the 1980s, the women you heard about from Carol earlier joined together in the UU Women's Federation to combat exclusionary sexist language and practices in our faith. They relied on a collective. They created new rituals. They advocated tirelessly for change. They sacrificed reputations, compensation, and mental health. Today, the majority of new ministers in our faith are women, and Unitarian Universalists are known the world over for adapting words to make them inclusive. It's 2020 now, and our faith is being called to account again. People of color are renewing a wave that started long ago, joining together in blue and drum and the Commission on Institutional Change, like the drops of water that form a river and ultimately the sea. They are raising their voices. They are creating new rituals and they are sacrificing. They are wearing away the stone. Once this water of change mingles with the Unitarian Universalism of today, what can our new faith look like? One of the creators of the original water ceremony, Carolyn McDade, is also a beloved composer. She wrote the hymn, Spirit of Life. And in our ritual for a new day, we pay homage to her with these words, honoring the power of water to reshape the world. Spirit of life, rise in the sea. Spirit of life, rise in me.
A Water Woman Has No Body by Lisa Sicarello. Emptiness is a blessing. blessing. It can't be owned if it doesn't exist. Exist. My father said to bloom, but never fruit. A small trickle eating its way through stone. A small trickle. Ooh. I am one kind of alive. Alive. Oh. I see everything the water sees. Everything. I told you a turn was going to come and turn the tower did. A turn was going to come. What are the master's tools but a way to dismantle him? Who will replace the blood of my mother in me? A cold spring rising. She told me a woman made of water can never crack. Woman made of water. And of her defeat, she said, this is nothing. Nothing. I 
treasure every season Be it winter, fall, summer or spring And I know the heat of the storm front And I feel the cleansing it brings You can always take shelter from the lightning You can stoke the fire against the cold But to run away from a darkening cloud Just to never let love take hold And there's a dark, dark cloud on the horizon And it boils up to the sky And it holds a sea and it's strong A poem by Jaspreet Kaur. Women are like water. Women are like water. They are the source of life, adaptable to any environment. Adaptable. They can nurture their surroundings. Nurture. Or tear them apart. Tear apart. Women are like water. They can be calm, soft, and warm. An eternal comfort. Quench your thirst. Comfort. Or they can melt and seduce every inch of your spine. Seduce every inch. Women are like water. They can be solid and hard as ice. They can create a storm, ripping the water storm. Or they can feed the seeds of their soil. Women are like water. They can move mountains. They can take over lands. And as time has shown us through ancient civilizations until now, we need them. You. The ocean has always been the place I have gone for renewal and healing. I've been struck by the beauty of the oceans in the Caribbean and the power of oceans after a New England storm. The power and sound of the waves, the gentle movement of tide pools, the refreshment of the water on a hot summer day, and the knowledge that the same coolness in winter can and does take lives. I'm blessed to live in an area of Massachusetts where I can experience not only the beauty of the Atlantic Ocean within a half hour drive, but I can also drive two hours north to where the Pemigewasset River leaves the White Mountains and follow it through New Hampshire, back closer to home to Lawrence, where it is the Merrimack River, and follow it east to where it empties into the Atlantic in Newburyport. Spirit of life, rise in the sea. Spirit of life, rise in me. I gathered this water during a hailstorm in July. It was so disturbing to be outside in the middle of summer surrounded by falling ice. 
so discordant. It was like a symbol of the way our climate is changing, our storms are increasing in frequency, in duration, in intensity. It was like a symbol of the way that we have treated not only the earth, but women's bodies. And it was a call to action. It felt like water raining down, saying, it is time to put the fire out. Spirit of life, rise in the sea. Spirit of life, rise in me. Loving creator, we ask for your blessing on children, families, and communities who are thirsty. Purify, protect, and multiply our water sources that we may all have clean water, nourishing gardens, and good health. Spirit of life, rise in the sea. Spirit of life, rise in me. Soon again. 
again the new moon rises far away from the light of day as I said sail for one more round your dazzling eyes will light my way will light my way carry me Set fast on my journey. Loose my voice that it will care.